See, this is what I'm talking about. I'm trying to bring it over. There we go. Trying to block my face. Trying to block the, his face again. Just brings it in front <laughs> so he can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that graphic over Cody's face. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I didn't even realize it because I don't um I don't edit those. Yeah. Like I'll just there's this uh, platform called Opus that does it, yeah. and it so it just sends it to you. I was like, oh, perfect, and I didn't even think about it. Oh, yeah. It's just so mindless. I'm like, all right, cool, that's a good clip download it put on instagram yeah. take two seconds for the caption then just it's gone yeah. and then people were like so do you only do that for the guests who aren't that good looking <laughs> <laughs> that's like oh poor cody, cody just tech, catching strays for no reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but we can't block uh i want to make sure that the viewers get a good look of this shirt so for those listening uh this is a picture of miles partain and andy benish Double fisting guzzling. champagne, guzzling uh, after Stad, I think. Right? Ostrava. 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 Okay, yeah. so first podium. Um, Speaking of which, that's a good uh, all-time photo. A good starting point because that event was wild. Oh, yeah. To know where you guys were sitting with the was it? It was in the qualifier, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Estonia match. Yeah. And then to see the kind of the momentum that that created for you guys. Yeah, it's definitely what a, a wild big event. Inflection point for us. Yeah. It's cool. When you look back on it, like, how different do you think your season could have gone? I, I, I think of when you, I think of your guys' season, I think of two major matches. One's your first one, yeah, against Hungary, yeah. And you guys were, you lost the first set, and you were down most of the second, if I remember right, yeah. Sneak that one out, end up taking a fifth. Was that in Brazil? In yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one is Ostrava down. 14-11? Yeah. 14-10? 14 12. 14-11. At least. 14-11, yeah. too. To Estonia. In the third. Side out to 12, maybe. And yeah. take somewhat of a, a very low odds. I'm not going to call it a miracle, but a very low odds reversal to win. Yeah. And when you think about those two matches, like how differently could your season have gone yeah. if those two go the other way? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it would have been a definite route, for sure. But could have been a blessing this guy. We played more volleyball. Probably played some more. Yeah, challenges. you can always look at it either right. way, right? Like right. if you're confident in your abilities, then yeah. things would have played out right to the to the way it, it did eventually. Yeah. But then there's the other side of it's like the momentum piece, and then it's like then the confidence piece, and like it yeah. kind of all has to come together. But there's no knowing, right? Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like feel like perception. I've had little things like that throughout my career where it was like, especially early on, where me and Hayden had to win this Norseka, or no, it was a, what was it? It was one of those playoffs. Country quota. Oh, it was a country yeah. quota playoff. Yeah. But it was eight early. teams and I had no points. And then Casey Jennings and Avery Dros decide not to play together because they just didn't want to play together. So they let me and Hayden in as, as the last seed. We win the event, which earned us a, a bid to the next three events. We were playing like for, for like chunks. Yeah. And and that's when I lost in the qualifier, but then got lucky loser <laughs> in, and then won the next event as the 28th seed in the qualifier, and then got a fifth in the next, and now I'm like ranked top, whatever, 15 in the world. Yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. It's it was crazy. like it just turns insane. on a dime. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was. Uh, I think that especially the Estonia match. I think that was a big learning moment for me personally to um, like. Miles was passing great, and I was like, I don't want an option anymore. <laughs> Just kept setting him. <laughs> it's like setting it straight into uh, T-Sar. T-Sar's hands. And, um, yeah, we were lucky to pull that out. But I, I think, yeah, it was, a, it was a really big learning moment to stay aggressive, especially when it gets tight. So. Yeah, because that kicked off a run. You guys go bronze in Ostrava, and that sets you up to be – you were straight into the main draw of Stad? Yeah, it was our first main draw. That's huge. Mm -hmm. And what a cool one to be straight in. Yeah. yeah. How different is the vibe between being straight into the main draw of an Elite 16 and in the qualifier of an Elite 16? Because the talent gap is not that big between qualifier and main draw. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little less stress, but it's it's about the same. Like, yeah, you definitely know the points are there, but same game and stuff, so... Yeah, there's probably more stress though. Yeah, one and done for sure. It's nice knowing too. You're not like losing money on the trip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we committed to to 
to play the, yeah. the year out. So it yeah. didn't yeah. really matter. Right. Like, you're going. We're going to go. Yeah. yeah. Whether qualify or not, and stay yeah. and enjoy it. If we didn't qualify and whatever, so there's a lot to learn. Like mm-hmm. either way. Um, and just in those two yeah. tournaments alone, you guys knocked off a bunch of teams that I'm sure you've been watching on YouTube. We, both of you guys have been watching on YouTube forever. I mean, you beat Parasite Schweiner for bronze after mm-hmm. losing to them in pool. You beat... Did you beat Qatar? No, no. we lost them lost in, in the semis. In the semis. In, in the th- in okay, yeah. played well. Yeah. Then you beat Brower Musen in Stad. Did you beat them twice? Uh, once in Stad. Once in Stad. Once in Stad. Yeah. <laughs> then you beat Anders and Christian twice. Like yeah. When you look back and they're like, Wow. Well, who's left? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy watching that. Yeah, it's yeah, funny it's though, really like cool. um the the Anders and Christian stuff is I feel like we had the advantage because like you were saying I, I mean me and Miles, we've been watching them like learning from them for so long that it's almost like we didn't I don't even I didn't watch any film either time we played them before the match. Um we kind of knew what we wanted to try to do. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we had the advantage because there's not that much film out on us, and we've been watching them for five, six years, mm-hmm. like every match. So, what's it like to play Anders and Christian for the first time? I always wondered that. I always think about like because I, I, when I'm commentating and I see someone playing them for the first time, so I got to commentate uh, Hodges and Schubert playing them for the first time, and the same thing when they played World Championships against Hanato and Vitor Philippe. I was like, it's a different experience playing Anders for the first time. And it's always interesting to see how people respond when he just makes one of those insane only Anders Mole can make moves. What was it like for you guys? Was it like kind of a moment? Uh, uh, first? I mean, I, yeah, I've seen everyone play them first already. And yeah, it is. It, I agree. It's interesting to watch. Um, but uh you as ex- as expected kind of um but yeah i was new to experience but it was as expected so we were trying to be ready for what we saw at least i was so yeah yeah I, yeah you know it, the american players kind of get a little taste of that with phil anders is making crazy outside the body moves but in terms of like the actual like bigness of the block you like you play phil you play anders feels about the same yeah is uh i feel like is phil like kind of in your corner because you played with them you got your first avp win with them do you ever call him and just ask for advice on anything or just tips i feel like because he he's so willing to pick up the phone for me whenever i need him for something i'd imagine that he's a readily available resource for you guys and probably you do try yeah, oh, yeah. i should probably call them <laughs> 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 yeah now phil's been awesome phil's um whenever we ask for help he's helped us he's helped us at some really important points i think not only with matches but off the court stuff too yeah um and yeah phil will text me i remember we played pedro and arthur in dubai in the semifinals, and he's like texting me stuff uh like out of the blue so it's been it's been really cool to have phil in our corner um it's funny i saw jen uh his wife and she, she's like, well, do you guys want that? I was like, yeah, it's great. He's like, oh, she's like, oh, I don't know how you guys feel about it. <laughs> yeah, no, tell him to text us whenever he wants. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, uh, it's been really cool. And then, um, our coach Mike has a close relationship with Todd too. So we've, oh man, um, you get gotten, both of those minds gotten close with Todd too. Um, we actually stayed up with him and did a little training camp last year too. Awesome. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty surreal to have, you know the volleyball legends be a part of your be a part of your team that's a pretty cool team to have you got playcheck dollhauser todd rogers yeah one thing i wanted to ask was this is something that you mentioned the other day is that there are a lot of people who have the best of intentions who want to give you advice how do you keep your team small when there's a lot of people all over the beach you'll just have like you we'll have people walk up on the strand and be like or when we were in hawaii this yeah. guy comes up and is like hey Kim, i think you can do this when you're setting and i was like we, you're not on the team yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right show me <laughs> <laughs> he just chowders the ball <laughs> yeah, i'm sure with you guys given the position you're in that you're young you had tremendous success everyone wants to be a part of it how do you keep the team like small and limited to where it's just the people you want on it 
I mean, well, you know, we neither of us are very good at texting back, so that kind of <laughs> that helps. No. <laughs> no, I text back. Yeah, yeah. If I also text back at like one AM like a week later. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Wrong. But I mean, yeah, you're right. It's I think we always look at it as we can take whatever we want from it. Um we we've done a pretty good job of insulating ourselves, I think, in a bubble. Um I think for me personally, that's one of the the things that is helping get to the top is having a really small circle, um, personally and professionally. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, what was the question again? Just keeping your team. Oh, keeping the team. Listening small. to yeah, the I mean, right voices. Yeah. If there's a bad opinion, it can just make you like stronger and more convicted on your views. So there's not really much that can hurt. So it's yeah. nice though to just have positive stuff, but you can learn from wrong things. Like it can actually help more. So yeah, it's kind of like weightlifting is. Especially yeah. your guys' style is very unique. You're the only American team that plays the way you do with just the sheer amount of jump setting and optioning. Was it uh, ever hard to stick to your guns last year? Or did you know that you were you well when we had you on individually i forget when we had you on last year we were like we're we're gonna live by the sword and die by the sword you almost died by it nitipema and then you freaking lived on it was it ever tough to stick by it especially as the end of the year maybe some of the film got out and you guys had a little a mini dip relative to the lofty standards you expected um no i mean i think that's the reason why we are where we're at um everyone i mean these blockers are nasty so yeah it's, it's pretty tough when they're just sitting on you like you know teams will serve you in system on purpose just so the blocker can line up mm-hmm. um i think having miles there to push me through like some moments where i'm like ah maybe i should like go away from it like miles is sagging out great mm-hmm. and it's funny like when we're on the court <laughs> he's like no i want you to hit him and i'm like no i don't want you to hit him so, <laughs> like, like neither of us want to hit <laughs> it's pretty funny um but yeah i think no, uh, i want you to hit him and i want myself to hit the option yeah it's <laughs> yeah. like second ball yeah, yeah. I was, we were joking the other week i'm like the oh he's like the, <laughs> he's like the m1 i'm just getting out of system balls he's just in system now but he i think him his experience with marcus too um his brother playing with him when marcus had a bad back like they they were forced into it and i think what marcus did for miles miles did for me where it's like no we we need this Mm -hmm. right we need it we need to do this to compete and um he was right yeah well miles you've been doing this for as long as I've ever seen you play. I mean, I'll, mm. we always we chat about that CBVA where you were playing with Dylan Merrick, and you guys were running mm, that yeah. system when you were like fourteen. I don't remember running it with Dylan. Maybe. Well, you guys because I don't you think were I could even well because that. you were limited though. <laughs> you were passing for Dylan to option. Oh, I was passing for Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was like getting yeah. And then you and Marcus when you were just kind of little runs, like you were jump setting and optioning, doing yeah. the setting over. Where did like? Where did you come up with it? Because that was before Sweden. That was before anybody else was, it was doing it. Mostly my Marcus. Yeah, I think he wanted to do that. So I like the jump setting and optioning. I liked optioning. I didn't really like jump, <laughs> jump setting a lot, but I, I would. Um, and then my brother would want to do like the quick sets and all that. And he would, yeah. So he, yeah, it was more him. Because you guys really kind of made it up strategy. Because shape. I mean, when you guys were doing it that was even still when it was uncommon on the world tour like you and john were kind of doing that stuff and yeah adrian <laughs> and alex maybe a little bit like you guys there was like a time. yeah there's like a few clips we can find that are few and far between and when i did it i felt like i was like breaking the rules i was doing it because yeah, it was kind of cool yeah i was like that was sweet but then i was like oh, but i think john's probably pissed <laughs> like that i'm like <laughs> that i'm goofing around you know it kind of yeah, felt yeah. like that yeah but like you probably okay. never like really lo- looked in soft footage of like people doing and being like, oh, I'm going to Im- mm, implement that as a whole a system, no. right? Yeah. I mean, it happens in indoor all the time, but not right. not with the hitting, but yeah, like just jump setting. But yeah, there was a team though that I don't remember what country, but back in the slacked. Yeah. I think Australia. 
Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, like that's what brothers, I heard, maybe right. or kind yeah. of something. I've never yeah. seen video of it, but I, I know that they were kind of like the originators. It's right? funny. Gosh, I forget. It might have been after we did your podcast, but a bunch of people sent me YouTube videos of um, the Schlacks yeah, brothers or cousins. It was funny because, but every time they would jump, they would jump set. Like they never yeah. option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, like, it's not that hard to jump set. It's, it's harder to option. It, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's harder to make make that decision i i think that's the most underrated part of it all is the decision making because it's the the best equivalent i can think of is when a quarterback has like a triple option type play where you can either hand off pull it away or pass and you guys have to make that in a split second in the air how long how long did that take because jump setting in itself is not a difficult skill optioning is in itself isn't a difficult skill but when you're in the air and then having to make the decision and then execute that's hard. Yeah. And even the timing of it, right? Like yeah. with the hitter mm-hmm. yep. is, is completely thrown off. Yeah. It's hard to have a predictable cadence, but you can. So, do how it. do you do it specifically? <laughs> <laughs> What's like the timing? And the <laughs> I mean, in indoor, cadence is huge with setting. Like if you have a different right. step close to the ball, like left, right, or right, left, or yeah. from what direction you're approaching it. So, it helps to set that as early as possible. And I think the better setters do that. Like, before the ball's even passed, I don't know. They just give off cues that are consistent. So I think mm-hmm. that helps with the like timing of it with yeah. the hitter on the third contact. If you're kind of all over the place with each set and taking it in different spots and angles, I think that makes it harder. And the Swede, Swedes have like a great cadence. They just look the same and stuff right. like that. Um, so that's it, huge. When I see you doing it, I can. it's just a different – you can see that indoor setter – part of your game like where you're still catching it high where i'm like you see me i'm like freaking out you're like <laughs> flailing and doing all this crazy but like you're still it just feels like in rhythm with you still and you're still able to catch it high and flick it and you can just kind of tell that like you've been doing it for years indoors yeah i do i said it much different i said it like way different indoor. i consider it like a totally different skill right but it is in the same contact zone i think yeah kind of it's a little lower but yeah I always liked beach setting more. I felt mm. more comfortable. But, right. Yeah. But it, indoor was good too. And it definitely helped with all the footwork, like so many sets over those years. Yeah. It's like, it's amazing how many sets they do. It's kind of like, I don't know what sport they make it equivalent to, but all the setters are doing, all the teams warming up, the setters are setting, like while they're hitting, they're mm-hmm. setting everything. They just set so much, thousands of balls. Well, think how many more and times like, you've jump set the ball than any of anyone else out here. I don't know if anyone else is like a high level indoor setter. Okay, not Sweden maybe because they've been doing this since right. day one. But I mean, realistically, yeah, you have a million more reps Other than, than him. Maybe, maybe Nikolai. Yeah, Nikolai set indoor. Did he really? Did? Paolo Nikolai. Yeah, I didn't know. He yeah, was but that's, he's been on the beach since he was yeah, like yeah. what seventeen. Yeah. It's been a earlier. Long, long time. He's starting to jump set. Too. I guess you have too. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been actually, and this is a kind of a common question that comes up, is that a lot of teams have taken what Sweden and you guys have been doing, and they've been trying it. And for a lot of teams, it doesn't work very well. Yeah. I remember midway through last year, I think Hamburg, I saw George and Andre starting to jump set, and I was like, ooh, I don't know if that's their game. Mm, Yeah. Is it, uh, would you recommend every team try it, or do you think it's for certain players and teams um i think that i mean everyone could do it yeah you have to shift your game a little bit um i actually thought andre and jo- i mean they got second or they got what they met no, yeah but they should have won that semi yep you know <laughs> <laughs> and then they went away from it yeah that's why that's what's scary. You like feel like you're doing something new and that's what lost you the game. Right. So it, it depends how strong your conviction is in yourself and your team, like how committed you are to it. Yeah. Um, I would agree. Maybe for some teams, it's not not the best route. Um, but if I was going to pick a partner, I would want them jump setting <laughs> and <Yeah>. optioning. <laughs> and it and takes a lot of stress. <laughs> yeah. Stress a lot off, off your plate. So um, I don't think there's like a correct answer. But they the the worlds have to blend too for it to make sense. So yeah. if you like if you're facing like your 
partner sideline when you're jump setting, but you're facing the net when you're hitting, like it's not doing too much. Yeah. And I have to give you so much credit because I mean, it doesn't seem that long ago where you were talking about how like embarrassed you were practicing at UCLA Mm -hmm. in the gym. And then in it to Pema, it didn't look smooth, the jump setting, but you stuck with it. I remember the first USA practice of the year when you were with Evan watching, I was like, holy shit. Like it looks like you've been doing it your whole life. Was there like, did it ever click in a tournament? You were like, found it. Or has it just been a, just a slowly refining, refining, refining? I think it's a Pema was a big one. Yeah. Um, I know Miles, we talked for like two hours probably on the phone before that. And I think he wanted to make sure I didn't feel pressured into doing it. I thought, well, <laughs> we practice it. I've, pra- I've been practicing it for the last four months. Like, I'm not going to throw that training out the window. I'd yeah. like to at least see it. Um, I think it does feel smoother over time, but even then, it's not linear. There's days where it, it doesn't feel great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to be able to have like a big window to be able to do it, and you can't yeah. just do it on perfect passes. Yeah. So I think just consistency over time has helped a lot, um, like doing it consistently over time and not taking a break from it. Um, and then if I do start taking a break from it, he'll let me know. So <laughs> <laughs> It's great. It's great. <laughs> How's the team yeah. dynamic between you guys? Like how, how do you communicate with Andy when you've got to let him know to get back to it? Uh, it'll, I don't know. I mean, he usually does it, so but it'll just be probably a question because he has good reasons for things. So he'll, he usually has some kind of thought on it. And so I'll just ask, we'll just talk about it. But yeah, I think you yeah. guys are like little scientists. You're always just tinkering with stuff. Yeah. When, when we had you guys at practice the other day, I was just like watching your dynamic and it looked like you were just always working on something or fine tuning something or perfecting something or other. It's just like a big lab. Yeah, it is like a big lab. Yeah, it's, it's, fun. Fun. <laughs> it's fun. Life is like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I feel like that's your sweet spot too. Like you just lit up and you're like, it is like a lab. It's yeah. just a big experiment. That's what I call my house. It's a lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad and I call it that, but I love it. Yeah. Now it's racquetball courts. Those are, those are the real lab. I love practicing in those. <laughs> big so, racquetball guy now. Yeah. No, well, then just the the, hitting the volleyball inside of it. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You don't have to no, shag that's it. Perfect. You just need one ball. Totally. You can like hit it against the wall and it comes like right back to you eventually. Yeah. And, yeah, I really like practicing there. Almost on par more than the sand sometimes. So, and it's just you. That's a new lab. Uh, yeah, it's just me too. The like no part. one's watching, yeah. or talking or anything. You can film it and stuff. So, anything? Uh, yeah. What was the big focus this, this off season? Any crazy big new skills? Is Danny going to start like doing? <laughs> Last year, jump setting was a big new skill. <laughs> yeah. You mastered that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can't tell us. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no not a, not a, like nothing like that. But yeah. Defense stuff and I don't know. Yeah. I think our defensive systems evolving. Um. And I think the way like we communicate is very direct for us, but it's coded so that I, not not that we're like trying to uh hide it from anyone but i don't think if anyone heard the conversation they would understand what we're saying yeah um which is really cool i think miles took a a big lead in that last year of like we need to have our communication be or our language that we use specific so that we know exactly what each other is talking about um i think like serving is going to be a big priority for us this year and obviously trying to run our, our system as much as possible um, yeah. offensively. Did you find that teams um, adapted throughout the year? Because like you said, in Stad, <laughs> you guys felt like you had the advantage because there was no film on you guys. Not really. You just had it to Pema, Ostrava, and Sakurima, I think, before then, which is not – it's a too small of a sample size for teams to really come in to make any adjustments. Did you find that as the year progressed and you guys established yourselves as – a legitimate threat to win every tournament you enter that teams had started to shift their style against you? Not really. No, I think, um, I think we tinkered a little bit too much in the middle of the season. We try to change some stuff. Um, maybe not at the right time. Um, just cause we wanted to try. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and we reverted back a little bit but i think like having our own identity is good instead of trying to be like another team yeah that we admire that's obviously doing something well mm-hmm. um we need to do it like our way so i think that was a that was a big learning lesson for us last year yeah is it hard for you to not tinker mouth like when you find uh, something that works yeah. is it hard for you to just like stay well, there no, if it works it works yeah yeah it just takes like a most i feel like things in volleyball for me if i get better it happens instantly and then i just wait for like another thing to come up but it's not that gradual so if, if something works and i don't think there's a better alternative like anywhere then then i'll stop and find the next thing but there's always enough to that's what think about but yeah because it's that tough balance right where if you're not improving you're in effect getting worse because everybody else is improving but Mm -hmm. at some point you also have to sort of get into kind of like a season maintenance mode when you have you have like like for us for example we have brazil brazil a week mexico mexico potentially china brazil i mean that's like what is that five tournaments in six weeks where skill acquisition that's not a great time for it (laughs) yeah yeah. so it like do you ever find yourself in a time where you're like all right now we just we gotta hit cruise control and, and maintain where we're at I think we're always like trying to, there's always something, you know, either you're relearning something that you learned like four years ago and you're like, oh shit, like how did I forget about it? It's like so simple. <laughs> right. sure. um, but I do think like being focused on improving and something is good. Maybe not like reinventing the wheel on it, but there are, there's stuff that just slips your mind. You're like, oh yeah, I remember like a couple of years ago, like I felt really good hitting. Mm-hmm. Like why was that? And then you mm-hmm. try to go through your like mental cues. Maybe something clicks. And like Miles said, like normally it's like you have one rep. You're like, oh yeah. Like I don't, I, you don't need to do like 150 reps. Like you find out one rep. Right. And then it's like, okay, let me feel it like two more times. Okay, we found it. Yeah. I think that's kind of where you're at right now. You're just like, I just need a couple quality reps and you got it. All right, now we're good. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Clicks. Definitely like over repping at this time isn't the best but yeah i think there's something to like even just talking about tinkering and like going to i, I know that feeling of going to the racquetball court like i've always wanted my own little private court so i can mm-hmm. just do my like little things here and there and i'm not as good as as you of like actually doing it like going out there and doing it when i'm done with practice or lifting i'm i'm pretty much done and i got other stuff to do but i think there's something mentally refreshing about always kind of having something to work on and you don't yeah, want to yeah. be stagnant you know you need a vision if it bores you, you yeah right so if it starts lost, getting bored yeah. apathetic about it yeah <clears throat> exactly i mean i mean it's for me at least right now it's like there's infinite stuff to learn because i feel like the game's kind of yeah especially because me and cam are kind of we're kind of old school style where, where we were so like there's just a lot of catching up to do now with with how much things have evolved but then like also like you don't want to over rep and I, I think it's just a timing thing, like yeah. you said, but but it's important to keep things fresh and like yeah. it's just like mentally you gotta be engaged and you don't get to like yeah. choose whether or not you're engaged or not. Like you have to actually want to be there and be interested, right? Right. But then yeah, timing of it, right? Like tinkering in the middle of the season was like, maybe we should have waited a little bit or like <laughs> done it at a different time. That's what he's for. Here's your for. <laughs> Tell me when to no, stop. It was good. Now I know. <laughs> no, it was good. Actually, I think it was good that, like, in hindsight, even if we didn't do as well as we would have liked to in some tournaments, we learned it didn't work for us, you know, so we didn't spend the whole off season doing it. Mm. And going to the first tournament, like, oh, shit, like, we just wasted three months. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of glad it happened the way it did. Yeah. yeah. You guys got, I mean, this year, obviously, we know what pretty much everyone's main goal is, focusing on the Olympics and all that. But do you guys have, a, I mean, you're still such a young team. you guys have, like, a long-term vision, or is it very condensed into this year? Um, yeah, just, like, what's the team vision here? A lot uh, of potential on the table, it seems like, from the outside. We're going to definitely finish this squad out and then reevaluate, but, I mean, L.A.'s olympics Long school way. and you know yeah. there's avps hopefully every year and yeah FAVB, so yeah I, i'm not sure yet is yeah, there like but, like um specific yeah, we'll uh 
bucket list things to check off the list, you know, that, that are career goals kind of thing like that. Obviously going to the Olympics and doing well. I think it'd be cool to like fully, uh, content create. I know I'm like, uh-huh. you may not think about me like that, but I think that's just a, that's some of the, the way to make a career in sports now is, you know, it's good to be a athlete, but it's even better to show it. So I know you've done a lot of stuff with that and you guys are now, but I think that'd be cool. Yeah. There's a lot on the table there. Um, I'd, it'd be cool to write like a, some kind of a book on the things I've learned with volleyball. Um, like Andy said, a lot of it's kind of not coded. It's just honestly, that, that just means I'm not great at explaining it, but I think it'd be cool to explain like everything I've learned. That's yeah. unique. So I haven't heard before and just like give that back to the volleyball community. I'm I think sure the really listeners cool. are like, can we pre-order that? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm thinking yeah. that. I'm <laughs> like, can you write it earlier so I'm I can hope- actually learn? <laughs> It'd be cool to make a website, which I have made. I just haven't publicly okay, like published it. protected with right. on the internet. Yeah, that, that, that shirt will be on there soon. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Everyone can get their shirt. There we go. But it would be cool to do blogs there about mm. volleyball stuff and then I think that's a good way to transition to a book if you see yeah. potential there. So that's something. Um, the LA Olympics would be really cool to right. win. Um, For sure. And then so would this one. And and uh, But really sh- the main goal is trying to see everything as like a growing opportunity and is good. That's one of the biggest things I've learned this year is just there's so much good to be found in things. And like you mentioned uh, – what what are we mentioned like changing some stuff in the beginning of the season and wishing we didn't but i think you have an article on the abp website i read about perception and stuff like that oh yeah and like we can view it like that like the fact is we did change some stuff it it probably made us temporarily worse but you can view it as temporary or Mm. kind of a permanent thing you wish you could have got back but yeah uh, you know i mean the whole thing we 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 do weightlifting it's like a challenge that sort of makes you weaker but you're stronger from it so like all the challenges you can perceive like yeah. that so everything's a win yeah i love that everything's a win i think that's what winners are is yeah. they see losses as learns and wins as wins and like you just can't lose yeah so no 100 uh, and like the harder your experience is the more you can learn from it and the more you can relate to other people too because mm. life is hard so yeah there's a lot of good around like you can just negate bad things and celebrate good things and right it's kind of good everywhere. So I, I'm really trying to look at things like that. Yeah. That'd be cool to really kind of train myself to see. So that's a great, great perspective um, to have, I think. And also like the content yeah. side, like sh- making a book or whatever, it's just like you're doing all these things, right? So why not share it? Yeah. And and yeah. when you step away from the game, the way, at least the way I look at it is like, how can you have the biggest impact? Like, right. Are you going to yeah. impact the game the most by having the most W's and, you know, having a, a fill like resume? Maybe, maybe that's your thing, but like we all have opportunities in other ways right. to like leave our mark and whatnot. Right. Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, that's, I think it's great to tinker in yeah. other ways. Right. And people, <laughs> On and, off the yeah. court. and people don't know where you came from. Like they'll, mm-hmm. you know, they'll compare right like, to this sort of arbitrary standard of what they can see, but. If I came from negative 100 and got to 10, yes. and you came from zero and got to 20, you gained 20, I gained 110. So who's the real winner? Like exactly. no one really knows. So it's just kind of up to God to see and actually weigh those things. But so I think it's just kind of run your race and learn yeah. from others. But that comparison yeah. thing's a biatch. <laughs> it's It'll a kill you, yeah. man. It'll eat you from the inside out. Yeah. It's really it's, hard too in athletics, I think, particularly. Yeah. Yes. Because you're at odds with Particularly everybody. in the Olympic mm-hmm. race, yeah. which yeah. is my third one. I'm like, try. You've yeah. learned this already. <laughs> like, yep. chill out. Yeah. Um, but that's cool. No, it's cool to see the visions not like, I mean, it, there's no right or wrong, but like, I can relate to the, to trying to do something off the court too. And for me, it's, what experience do I want when I'm done as a professional athlete, not just right. a volleyball player? You know, yeah. it's like, how do I want my whole experience to be? And yeah. You're a professional athlete. You're an entertainer, right? Like that's part of it. Mm-hmm. But like at the end of the day, that's why it, the, why our sport exists. Like why this job exists because right. people are entertained by it. 
So like, let's connect with these fans and give right. to the community as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. that's I think, cool. I think that's something both of you guys have done really well. Like, yeah, if yeah, your cool. career ended right now, like you'd still be in the volleyball community. Yeah, you know, that's that's special. Yeah, that's definitely nice to know. <laughs> like as <laughs> yeah. I get older, you know, I'm like, Whew, this is tough. <laughs> yeah. um, but but it did take like not knowing anything and and not many people were doing it like the generation above us nick and phil and todd and all, all them they weren't really a part of it i remember being the young guy out there and like being the first guy to bring the gopro on the road i was like oh sick a little yeah. underwater camera guys they're like yeah i don't care I was yeah. Like, yeah check out my instagram it was like no one on it yeah but i was the only one doing it so it took that like initial thought of like I'm going to do something bigger than like, you know, like something. I just mm -hmm. want to learn the business side, learn the, and like, I was like, I don't think it's happening. Like it never felt like it was actually happening. And then now I'm like sitting here today, like, oh, we actually have like a yeah. legit product. But even starting it, it wasn't anything. It yeah. was just me and him tinkering. Yeah. But like having that intention and like, yeah, just like I want to do it. And if the opportunity presents itself and, letting it happen in an authentic way like for me it turned out into a partnership with travis and a podcast but like everyone's got their own skills and like yeah there's i don't enough know for everybody yeah exactly there's not like yeah. there's not a competition in that part of it at right. least that's the way i see and it. that can yeah. help with the competitive aspect of sports is like i said everyone could win um, yes with like like I'd say godly mindset, but the, yeah, there's right. abundance for everyone. Yeah. Um, depends what kind you're looking for, but I think in the most ultimate kind there, there mm -hmm. is. So yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely a good vision for each of us, but like if you start a podcast, it's good to see it where it could go and like yeah. have that guiding you because that's just two guys in a random place with like 10 views for the first one. Like yeah. that's not very inspiring, but the vision and the direction you guys are in on and we're on like that that is so i think keeping the vision before you and like really trying to dream and craft that i mean the C ceos are like that's their whole thing is they're just trying to right like have some kind of vision to keep the employees engaged right and themselves and yeah the world so like elon musk like so much of the intrinsic value of whatever he does is like multiplied by his like vision yeah. visionary like qualities right same with trump honestly yeah like, it's true he yeah so they, they do like a great job with that stuff. for sure yeah huh. hey, one of my and jesus <laughs> jesus he had like the highest was, vision don't forget jesus <laughs> must drop jesus <laughs> somebody, somebody yeah. print that on a shirt jesus was, yeah, he was shirt. pretty good at it <laughs> yeah he got a lot of people to catch on to his vision so. yeah still doing it too yes yeah. exactly but so. i i love the saying that i i forget where i heard it on a podcast that you know if if there's three guys on a ladder there's one at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom. Which one do you want to be? And it's the one who's still climbing. Where, and you right. mentioned if you right. start at negative 100 and you're a 10, or if you start at zero, you're a 20. Even though you're a 10, you might seem the perceptions that you're behind, depending how you want to frame it. Yeah. Yes. You can frame it that I just made a 110 point game yeah. versus this guy made 20. Like, right. I'm cruising now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can just view <laughs> yeah. yourself as so I true. start at negative infinity. So, <laughs> so I beat all you guys. <laughs> Right. Like you can just kind of claim that. That's for yourself. so true. I mean, like who says otherwise, you know? Yeah. That's so why I like, think like some of the people who have it hardest in terms of like personal inner contentment yeah. are people who are like born into like these massive fortunes. And right. the public yeah. puts this perception on them that they're uh, more successful. Like they're like, well, I was just born. Yeah. Like, like what, you know, and how do I build from here? Like my dad right. made our family a castle or whatever, you know? Right. Yeah. I always think like that would be hard. Yeah, like, I could be tough, rich now. That's, that's I'm cool. Tough. Yeah, I could totally be rich now. Cause, but if I was born into it, then I wouldn't yeah. have all the stuff that I gained getting there. You need like know. a really big vision. Yes, that's, exactly. That's, that's just, yeah. It's right. higher than any experience. Yes, exactly. You watch you Breaking have... Points? Yeah, the tennis. The tennis uh, one. Yeah, right. Pagula. She's an American woman. She's yeah. like number three in the world right now. She's the Dot, the heiress of the bills yeah fortune yeah and oh like, wow people discredit her all the time like mm. oh you're just you know you're rich yeah like that's why you got and they like you know they follow her if if anyone is looking for a good tv show breaking points is is awesome but i think her story kind of 
represents that where she's worked so hard to get where she is but people just like oh well it's because you're rich like right you, know, you got the semi-final bet. win yeah yeah, yeah. It's crazy the shit people say on social media. Oh, yeah. Like, man. Brutal. <laughs> She's like the number three ranked tennis player in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's Breakpoint. Breaking Break- Points is a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I like Breaking go. Points, too. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's also good. Yeah. But, Miles, where did you get that mindset from? That seems <laughs> Four like... Four weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that seems yeah. like... Uh, I talked to you about it before. Uh, yeah, yeah, a new thing. And I... I'm, I yeah. Was curious I mean, if you, wanted to, had it in a if way, you wanted to elaborate yeah. that. I mean, uh, yeah, I talked to Andy about it and stuff, but uh, it's like, I think we all have, and there's like an objective world out there that are like the Bible calls it earth. It's just, there's heaven and earth or there's the objective world. There's like, I think of a, a good example is a cup that's half filled. It's kind of, you can't say anything without in, intrinsically adding meaning to it or we can't communicate in lack of meaning but in the best way you can try to describe the objective world is like a cup that's 50 percent filled mm-hmm. and like you can view it as half empty or half full and that's the story you and we we always like add a story element you mm-hmm. have to so um kind of learning that and saying oh like it's i used to think objective world was everything mm-hmm. and like including story was also kind of just all the same so now learning that oh my gosh the story world is super powerful it's the world of faith and vision and hope and dreams and and like heaven so you kind of choose you get to choose your thoughts and you get to choose how you frame what like hmm. try said about perception and all that i'm sure you learned a lot with yeah like life in general but also the health stuff you went through and yeah you know i feel like if you didn't have that perspective you you, it would have been way harder you know? right like for sure so you need to have that you can call it positive stuff but or or whatever but i think like it's almost a, a miracle i know this is religious but it's just true the gospel is like a story that encapsulates all the limits of possible storytelling like capabilities like the highest god as high as possible went all the way down to death so that's like the life and death theme like maximized and then he resurrected so he like destroyed death so that's cool and there's like justice maximized like sin like hell god's wrath was satisfied like justice is satisfied mercy is like completely like the limits of it grace the absolute limit so there's no story beyond the gospel i think so and viewing it that way, I feel like Jesus came, he made all the bad things good, and he like gave us just good stuff. So whatever story I'm in, I'll relate I can relate it to what I think is the highest story. It's like true, kind of. But I view it more vertically, and it's like it's just the highest story. So like mm-hmm. things can be more or less I, I view things more as like good and bad or up and down now as far as much as more than true or false. Hmm. Oh, I like so that. like because stories are like they sort of have this true element to them but the objective world really does like the the glass is 50 percent filled like that's true mm-hmm. but how you see it is really up to you and that's kind of the god you serve is how you view things mm-hmm. what you give your attention to so what you worship and all that so really understanding that and like it's made me see confidence i used to be so concerned and like really confused what a winner was like i viewed some athletes as winners and some as not myself is not for a lot of my life and i was just like why do i see myself this way what does a winner mean like i've seen winner qualities and you try mm. and like like why is how does he have that like trevor i, I think has a ton of winner qualities mm-hmm. um and i'm like like he practices hard but he's not like david goggins so like, <laughs> i always thought like to be confident you have to be david goggins right right, but, right like right. now i see it as you just apply the story to your mm-hmm. own life that makes you confident so in a way you just make it up like yeah it's a, oh 100 it's like just your imagination as if your imagination is some small thing like people just discount it in this scientific world it's a decision like it's like world. a decision yeah right? it's a like, decision why are why are you the best because i said so yeah because i said so a that's, lot of confidence I mean, that's is trevor like because in a, i said so I, yeah. like i have the authority yeah like yeah. I'm why going, do you have the authority yeah, like ultimately i think god does have the most 
But among us, like the confident people are say why? Because I said so. Like Trump is like, why do you th- Trump says like <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know the, I know more about healthcare than anybody. He's like, <laughs> he's like no, there's definitely some expert, but right. like by whose standard? Trump's like my standard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it's me. Like my 10 minutes that I got briefed on healthcare is multiplied by my faith times a billion and now i'm the best yes. so he can he can say it like sort of truthfully right yeah which because it's, it's his truth right? right but it's it is true like i yeah. think it, it kind of is and the story world has a little bit less of a truth mm-hmm. element more of a high i don't know faith can like multiply like you can have one rep and say oh i'm gonna that's gonna be the the rep this like one really good hit you can, that's the best hit like felt super good and you can say that's gonna repeat infinite times like I know it because I said so. Or right. you can say that was just one rep. It's not necessarily going to repeat itself. I don't know. Like I have to prove it again. Yeah. That's the confidence that I had. I was like, well, it was just one rep. Like God's will is going to be done. I'm not sure if it's going to happen again. Like right. we'll see. I'm not going to put any kind of faith into it. Just very doubt filled huh. or at least faithless or something. I don't know how exactly how to describe it. But now if I get a good hit, I'm like, that's happening again. Mm-hmm. I know it's going to happen again. Why? Because I said so. Yeah. I love <laughs> and it's that, like, dude. It's that why? manifesting thing, right? It's, it's manifesting. Just, that's like what faith Well, is. how does it work? Manifest. I don't know, but it yeah. seems to I work. Mean, like, the Bible just deals think with, it enough. Yeah, the Bible deals with faith a lot. Jesus says it can For move sure. mountains. Like if, yeah. you, like if you have faith and pray, it can literally move mountains. And it's a powerful thing. It can be used for yeah. evil, you yeah. know, real evil. So you have to yeah. make sure to find good, good like properly. So- you can't if you define if you call good evil and evil good and then apply faith to that it's real dangerous and that's so it's like yeah. the power we have because you can do you can do it subconsciously too yeah, right like i almost stuff. feel like I, n- therapy goes I never thought that. i'd build an amazing podcast like we're yeah. literally at where yeah we're just at where we're at you know we never even yeah. had a vision to go beyond the first day <laughs> we're like let's just do it today because it's, it's what we want to do today yeah <laughs> and like I always want to do cool shit. Like I have yeah. this, I think I've manifested it in this. Yeah. Like you, have, you got to put the dreams. You keep before dreaming. You. It. Yeah, yeah, I dream it up, yeah, but I'm not like I want to do it today. It's just like yeah, I want it, and that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. And then you see little things in your life happening that way. Right. Like it kind of just trying doors to open. SC or something. Like me and yeah. you probably never. At some point in our lives, we're like we're we're probably not going to go to SC. We're not not that good at volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but yeah. No, yeah. And then I went to SC. I was like, oh, that was yeah. weird. Like yeah. I manifested that one kind of. <laughs> yeah. No way I'm graduating. Well, I graduated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no way I'm going to make a pro team. Whoa, yeah. you know. And then you keep like doing yeah. these little things, and you're like, well, might as well ma- keep manifesting shit. You know? Right. Yeah. So you're not, gonna keep it, doing it. It's like it does feel kind of subconscious, though. Yeah. Like, you're not like. I feel like people think you have to like press every day to create that vision. It's just like dream it up yeah. and then like be the person who would end up in that place. Yeah. I to don't know. Does me, that yeah, make sense? To me, it's almost this eerie thing. It's like, it's almost like there's a God that's like honoring it. Right. That's yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I think it proves that a little bit. Like it seems kind of outside of you, but it's part of you. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the doors open that and, you're looking for. Yeah. So if you're looking yeah. at, oh, like we might lose, that door is going to open yeah and like oh we're gonna win that door's mm-hmm. gonna open yeah and For if sure. it closes you just learn from it so yeah. you can just like just be like oh that was the wrong door yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. Door. i didn't need <laughs> that wasn't my fault yeah. oh now i now i know which door the is wrong door they, they don't know which they don't know one of these doors is wrong yeah they just went through the wrong door we just we just escaped now i have the upper hand right it's like this thing of regret from this is gonna make me better than if i had won exactly that that was my thing right when i got my autoimmune it's like oh now i'm now I got the yeah. cheat code because I've overcome something right, yeah, right. and I've gone into this mindfulness state, whatever. Yeah. But so, what I was thinking of recently, I mean, it goes along the same things is like regret. It's like, yeah, I don't, it just doesn't make sense to ever regret anything. Right. Yeah. right? It doesn't it's, under, it doesn't. Do you regret yeah. doing that? Like, I get why I should yeah, say yes. I understand it, but yeah. But like, no, because it's just like, why? It's yeah. just not helpful. Yeah. To it's regret. not helpful and it's not even necessarily true. Right, exactly. The, the, right. the objective it's a story, is right? not have input on it. Mm. You do. Yeah. And like you yeah. saying that you don't regret it doesn't mean you're not acknowledging that it was a mistake right. when yes. you did it. It's just that the piece of information, the lesson you extracted from it is more valuable than the event itself. And right. so, no, you don't regret it yeah. happening. You're, yeah. you're basically saying like you'd give back the lesson learned. Like, would you right. give back the lesson learned or take 
yeah. the risking doing that thing and maybe getting the result. You're like, mm, right. no, I'm yeah. not going to give that lesson back. Right, right. I don't know. Usually it's worth more than whatever you would have lost or whatever the consequences yeah. where that lesson was worth the price of admission. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about well, some stuff you've like – extreme example but if you kill someone like you're not going to say oh no i kind of right. wish i learned that lesson so yeah, it's yeah, like that's a good point but there's some a stuff, point. That's like a good point. i don't know i agree though it's, i've thought about that like well but even that certainly like, with think, sports but like losing and winning but i don't know about like more moral things where like i really did hurt someone like i don't think the lesson is maybe maybe by the end hurt. of your life like it would take longer but by the end of your life you could impact focus on having so much yeah. of a positive impact yeah. that it negates the right. negative that you had Negating years ago is like really powerful and you see Maybe, that a right? lot in like like people that murdered people mm. they get really religious and they try to have as big of an impact that way as they can and maybe maybe if they didn't kill that person they would have just been robbing people their whole life right. instead of yeah you can it's like another story right? yeah exactly you can, right you can frame it killed one but saved saved hundreds, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah if you do something wrong you can be like dang it i did that or Thank God that I didn't do it twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, right, it's, you're not saying it's, you're not calling evil good or good evil, but you can still, it's still good to be asked for forgiveness. I was having that, um, a similar conversation with Delaney about, um, I think Miles, you could probably relate to this, but I think that we're talking about how Christianity, I think, makes people anti fragile. Oh, yeah. Because you yeah. take, a, well, the story is like there the are bad There's things the, that happen, yeah. and you can look at it as, a woe is me type deal. I mean, like this is a yeah. sad thing that happened. Or you can say, God had something planned. The universe had something planned. Whatever it may be, yeah. what is it? And you yeah. might not know for five years. But you trust it's something But you better. trust it. Yeah. And you're like, you'll end up being better for it. It's like, for example. Yeah. And you think clearly. Right. With that mindset. And Fear just like my totally. little brother, he, my little brother, he's 31. Forever be my little brother. He had his first friend that he grew up with passed away like two weeks ago from cancer oh, man. and i told delaney i was like i feel oddly equipped to like talk to him about it because i went through that with eric and yeah. i was like five years later that came to fruition mm -hmm. and so we just like when you are able to look at whatever happens to you right and think something could come of this right yeah it's just a matter of time till it happens yeah it's, on it's the a way. powerful mindset it's on the way it's yeah. on the way yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and in a sporting sense you talk about that with kevin garnett a lot about yeah every rep i've ever had paid off i just didn't know when it would pay yeah off. Right. Not, that's not, that faith piece yeah like, the faith yeah faith is huge yeah yeah he's yeah. like it, it might have paid off like two years later than i wanted it to but like every sprint i did everything like it in hindsight, speaking of his career, he's like, yeah. every single time I did something, it paid off. And I was glad I did it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that book, The Confident Mind, I didn't even read it, but I was looking at your blog. Yeah. You recommended that, right? Mm -hmm. So I looked at a summary and like it said, like every good thing you do, you want to like look back on it and it like, and acknowledge you did that, right? Isn't mm -hmm. it kind of a part of the book? Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like, like, you can multiply the effect of doing something good by like focusing on yeah. it. You know, if you don't, then I think it you would love it. Stays. Given this conversation, yeah, I think you would really enjoy that book. Because so Zana recommended that to me when we had her on the podcast last February. Yeah, she got it from her brother who played professional baseball, and I've since recommended it to no less than two dozen people. And every single one of them has been like, that was yeah. the best book I've read. I've now recommended it to a dozen people. Evan yeah. Corey just read it. And he's not shy on confidence. No. But he said it's one of the most useful books he's ever read. Huh. Yeah. And he went out and recommended it. He's like, Savvy's reading it now. Yeah. So I highly recommend. Yeah. Yeah, it's really seemed good. It comes at it from kind of a scientific perspective, right? Like yeah. research-based and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Research and also a lot of stories and anecdotes because he said so almost the author, I, I like the stories more honestly well that's <laughs> how stories are more powerful they're lasting me. right because and so you could read this i go through with this with books a lot is that you could read the 15 minute blinkist version but then yeah. you miss the narratives that wrap the right. lessons in yeah and that's how you remember it is through stories i through almost stories. feel like yeah and, and i didn't grow up religious but like that's what religion is is yeah it's all it's the story. same value i'm hearing the values i'm like this is all great it makes sense these are all the things i'm learning in my life mm -hmm. but i didn't learn the story like that it's right. connected to but 
you see how many years it's been passed down. They're like this is how people learn, like by yeah. tying it into stories and yeah. characters or whatever yeah. it is. You know, I, I don't know, but it is interesting to see like, we're all kind of like just trying to figure out this life the same way, yeah. but we created different stories to be able to memorize it or like yeah. learn it. Yeah. Science is its own story too. It's not like it can escape the religious right. like necessity or whatever mm. story necessity. So mm. it's, it's not, it, it tries to escape, but it, it doesn't. It's has its own ethic and right. like hierarchy of mm -hmm. values and all that. So, and this yeah. is yeah. no uh, small mindset you've developed, like a bit of a shift. Right, because you you said originally you looked at yourself and you didn't have this. Yeah, I viewed myself as a loser. I, I don't know why. I just like I knew it. Like I just felt like a loser. Loser what meaning like, you, like even I could win an ADP and, and feel like I was a loser. A weird right? loser, like in terms of wins and losses. No, just like, like you just, didn't deserve it. No, 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 it. no. I yeah, like I didn't deserve it. Huh. I thought wins were luck. Yeah, and yeah. losing was all my fault. Now I think I'm choosing to think that wins are my fault and luck. L losses are luck okay. and i think that's exactly how trevor views things a bit right right <laughs> yeah like if you do something good against him he's like i was lucky if he does it he's like all day it is funny so i'm <laughs> trying to i think he's hit on something super profound and i think it helps him so that's so funny i mean i'm i i don't think it's false in any way no it's i mean it's um, worth acknowledging it kind of seems like false but it's i don't think it we've is. we've all like our group of friends since we're kids it's like we're talking about this guy just like what are you this guy's crazy. Like, yeah. like he yeah. the the famous bet with Riley when they're in high school that he's going to the NBA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we didn't have money to bet back then. They bet a hundred bucks, right. and Riley's like, "Are you shoot? Like, you're crazy, Trevor." He's, so, he's, I'm going to the NBA. Hundred bucks. Still saying Let's that, go, right? right? Or, <laughs> now, well, still now he's. Well, he I don't, could. I don't he think he has be. paid up. He and could he, be still exactly, it. and he still <laughs> says it. Yeah, like it's he not. hasn't paid up, and he still says, "I still got a shot. I still got a shot." Yeah, yeah. But you're right. It is funny. Uh, I yeah. think, unfortunately, in athletics, too, to get to the top, you have to be self-critical to, like, fix mistakes. Yeah. It almost breeds that mindset where it's like, oh, yeah. I'm not worthy of, of winning. Yeah, it can. There's two types. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's the self-critical and the, like, oh, uber confident and everyone between. But yeah. yeah, I feel like the confident is, is better. Yeah. I feel like the criticalness has helped me, but overall, it's helped me really learn to be how valuable confidence is. Yeah. Yeah, you get from, we're all so we're all so different every individual is just yeah such I'll a unique blend gifts. of all that yeah. yep How'd that's the comparison there to hear it's like miles. not apples to apples mm -hmm. you don't know where people are coming yeah from exactly yeah. or where they're going 100 percent. so yeah what i'm curious how you fostered that like how'd you get from winning was luck losing's my fault to flipping that because script. i said so travis <laughs> Look at this it's guy. like <laughs> i was gonna start I was talking wondering, like, what is this? <laughs> I, seriously i've been like all right this is how now i can see how people talk like trash. and, and you like, know what's oh, funny like talking, it's just because they said so they just made it up and i used to discount exactly it. now i see the value in it it's so. made up and and the but person made, who buys into it is the one real. that gets affected by it yes yeah. Yeah. and that's why like Who's, it's literally noise yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just making noise yeah but then it bothers that person. Yeah. You're like, well, yeah. we're competing right now. So if right. it bothers you and my noise, I'll just play loud. It's like Patrick yeah. Beverly. Like he get, he kept telling, saying he's the best defender in the NBA. He's legitimately probably one of the best defenders yeah. in the yeah. NBA. Right. And it's the most fun when two athletes both fully think they're going to win. Yep. And that's what sports, the best yes. sports is when both come. Yeah, you got like Pedro yeah. and Trevor and, playing each other. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's awesome. They both think they're going to yeah. win. They yep. see everything as like every loss is like – being unlucky and win is their fault and then they just they yeah. just go at it and that's the fun of sports and i think it can really just make people better yeah you know and all things so i don't think competition is like i think competition will be in heaven i don't think mm. it's like a interesting bad thing i think it helps everyone be better so like because if you're if you everyone's a winner with this sort of mindset if you lose you learn if you win you won right so and learning is like negating because you have to die to what you used to think in order to have a new opinion so learning from bad things is like negating bad things so i think about it as like negative one times negative one is positive one so if you can just look at bad things and negate them and then make sure to keep the good things good then then you win that's what like a winner is so yeah and the understanding that has really helped hmm. but the language of creation is the book Travis that helped me like okay. some of that 
Is that, that the one where you're finding like you the about. fractals and everything? Yeah, like looking yeah. at reality like uh, fractally, which isn't a very helpful word for most people, but just like everything is a microcosm of some bigger pattern. So it helped me see, it kind of defined reality mathematically. And it also used like stories in Genesis to uh, frame the world. And then I, th I thought like, okay, the Bible is like really old. It definitely has some good truths, especially Genesis. So everything kind of lined up and he didn't use any bibliography, the author, which I really liked. He used that the ideas stand on their own, mm -hmm. you know, like for math, you don't need a bibliography. Like you don't need, you right. know, one plus one is two, whether I said it or some you don't guy need to from India a thousand years ago. Yeah. yeah. So I liked how he, he, he didn't, you know, it wasn't beholden to like academia. It was just, just uh, like really true ideas that he was hitting on. And then that helped me understand how reality was framed. I was like, Oh, this story, world or he calls it heaven and there's heaven and earth and that's how the bible started in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth so that made me think oh that's what he means and then there's huge symbolism between up and down right like up is there's just like two categories there's up and down that's it that's like the whole thing we live in right oh there's heaven and earth same thing and then good is when heaven and earth join and bad is when heaven and earth are so when you lose, you're in, heaven is like your intentions, earth is your ability to like match them. So when you're playing a volleyball game, you're, you want to win, that's your intention, and you try and match it with your actions. And if heaven and earth join, you won. Right. You know, but if heaven and earth didn't join, you can switch it around real quick and learn from it, and, and then they join. <laughs> so everyone can win. You know, I mean, it's, it's harder with losing for sure, and sometimes things can break you. Yeah. Might have but, lost me at some point there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's simple, but also took a, a long time yeah, to exactly. think about. Yeah, what which most ideas are. You know, it's a, like that. Or, I mean, it's a random thought it, based on what we've been talking about. But like, it's interesting that the highest form of entertainment to like mankind is competition, right? Sports yeah, and movies. So yeah, it's great storytelling. storytelling and yeah. competition. It's funny. That's like that, what yeah. we gravitate towards. Like, yeah. I don't know, for inspiration mm. and all that. And what yeah. they want to see in terms of us on the court is our raw, like living right. out these like yeah. struggles and competing against each other right. because they want to, they can relate to it, right? Yeah. At a certain level, but we're just heightening it and maximizing yeah, you're it. With scoreboard it. Right. and a clock and yeah. money on the line. The more money, the, the more, more people money, want to watch, people right? Want to watch. Yeah. And it's Which just, it just enhances the story, right? And that's what, yeah. I mean, the basic, the three big tenets of a successful sporting event or just sport or narrative complexity and communication. You have your story, how complex it is, which enhances your ability to tell, to tell a better story and how do you communicate it? They're yeah. almost like micro torturing us, right? Like we're, I mean, we're basically <laughs> yeah, modern is. day gladiators, <laughs> we right? Are. We are. But like it's now like we don't get it. Like, stuff. Yeah. We don't have to like get our head <laughs> but, cut I mean, off and yeah. shit. Yeah. It's not as intense, but in a way it <laughs> is. Well, Gervais yeah. had on a podcast and he was talking about, it's really hard to decipher between people with disorders and professional athletes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like OCD. Like he's right. like, I see it. Every, I see the same, whatever you call it, d things. They're doing the same things, but one of them's a disorder and it's very yeah. different. Like you're not, someone with OCD is like suffering from certain things, you know, but like he sees with professional athletes that they do the same stuff. Superstitious. Yeah. yeah. yeah and wh whether it's OCD or, you know, a bunch of other things, but yeah. It's a it's, bunch of mini deaths. It's like kind of gnarly. Every time you lose, you're like. Oh yeah, hit down every 100%. point. Like mm -hmm. it's all, all day practice. Day, yeah, day practice. You don't leave it at scored too. Yeah, I just lost fifty bucks to Trevor today. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. still feel, I still feel it. <laughs> yeah, just, it, it so. stings to send the Venmo. It hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, went into USA you. volleyball after and and I it was just me in there and I think David Lee, and I send the Venmo to Trev, and then he's like, "Thanks, bud." I was like, "What?" He was like quietly like yeah. laying on a bench. I didn't his, know he was there. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I sent it right when I walked in next yeah, to you. I didn't know you were there. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Sometimes, Miles, what I've found is that when people get a bigger perspective just on life in general, that sometimes, yeah. um, and I'll use a biblical reference for you because I think you get, you, you get sort of this Ecclesiastes perspective where yeah. it's like, well, this is 
beach volleyball is meaningless right when you have a bigger perspective but when we had you on last time you described your gift which i think you do have a gift of playing beach volleyball as a spark from god Mm -hmm. whereas i think that sport and whatever else we choose to pursue it gives you the ability a platform in this case to communicate stuff like this which i think is super important yeah and i think that that's the way that you can sort of equalize playing a made-up game on a beach yeah everything's kind of made up right like like, i don't think the made up (laughs) term is like discounts things anymore right like yeah i mean i know we do need food but we kind of make up like what kind of food we want to make right get like we could just be eating like really simple stuff (laughs) we make up like all the complexities with it but but have you been able to find has that has this helped you find sort of the bigger picture and bigger role that volleyball can play in your life yeah it helps me frame it i mean things are still hard it's still really hard to lose and like yeah it's not like it makes it a lot easier just to have like some understanding of it but i mean it's gives you hope and stuff like that yeah um it's still like i want to win every tournament you know it's almost like right now inspiring others too right like because others are taking l's throughout their life and like to show them like on that more exaggerated platform like they like well look he just lost out there like i took an l he took an l in front of everyone yeah you know like other people are i guess gaining something from it right you can yeah but it, if you feel alone mm-hmm. in it and you're just like why am That's i doing this then and yeah which is supernatural like yeah I think we all do it mm-hmm. um i don't know how to i don't know how to get over losses still <laughs> um yeah it's really hard yeah um it's i don't really know where i was hard. going with that yeah <laughs> but i mean you guys you guys were dangerous when miles didn't think he was a winner damn it i know it's kind of funny like Gosh, yeah i don't it, it. it hasn't made me like instantly like way better or something but <laughs> right well i think it i believe it does <laughs> yeah oh wait it has <laughs> well like yeah <clears throat> so yeah it is it is interesting though like i would win a game or a lot of games i'd win a shot and think oh, i was lucky or like i would tell myself oh it was god's will it wasn't me at all right but god made me so like he gave me gifts so i'm gonna own those like also, just because a, f- a factory made a cool car, the car is cool. So I think like God made me cool and I'm going to see myself that way. Otherwise, I'm like telling him like, oh, you didn't make me with capabilities. It was just, it, it like negates my free will. Right. If I just say, oh, it was all God. It was, but it was also me. Like he made me. So right. that's how, I, yeah. So, but it is interesting. Yeah, I was able to win before. So it just, it, it really in- reinforced like, oh, it's not based on winning. <laughs> right. It's not because I won. I could win like whatever amount and it wouldn't change. So it's kind of a like a huge contradiction to the idea that like it's fully just based on the past. You know, it's a lot more how you view it. Right. So. And I feel like um, it's got to be kind of fun for you to watch like Miles come into his own. Because I feel like you kind of play, when I watch you guys together, me and Delaney talk about it, it's just like, and he's like the big brother. I mean, it's kind of cool like for you to watch Miles like develop like this, and now your team developing too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I know like Miles is a very deep thinker, obviously. <laughs> um, and there was certain moments that, that I think were hard for him last year yeah. to go through. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, like, I think Phil helped us out a lot during those times. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, for me personally, and I, I told this last year to Mike, I was like, I just want Miles to be happy and like stoked on what he's doing. And, and yeah, because I was feeling burnt out. Yeah. Part yeah. Of the season. Yeah. And it's, it's cool to, you know, like, like we said, like everything happens for a reason. So maybe going through that, that lull will help him yeah develop you know develop something like this where it's a mindset where he can shift his perspective yeah Um, i'm not like worried about him i mean i hope he's not like super sad obviously but i think even if he was he'd still be playing great volleyball but like that's not the purpose like i want to like i care about him as a person and it's cool to like see him you know reinvigorated and stoked and it it makes you know me more stoked too obviously and our whole team um so it's cool. I, I I knew he would find something. Like he's a smart guy. He's not gonna give up on his curiosity. 
I think if he feels lost or stuck or something, he's going to find a way out. And um, I'm glad that, that first of all, that religion has helped him kind of find that too. But I think a lot of it is just his maturation process through, through sports. So, yeah. Yeah. Sports has helped see it. I think sports are such a great, Teach yeah, like it. there's nothing like life. it. Yeah. yeah, you live like many lives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also just time, right? Yeah, yeah. growing up, like yeah. you're super mm. young. How old are you now? Twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't on tour till twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. So it's just like you got to give yourself that too, right? Yeah. Time to grow up and like yeah. everything that all these other guys have learned has been like over a decade, right? Like a third, half of your life, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Um. So just like patience and, and that, yeah, even for me, I mean, and, and then the older you get, everyone starts telling you the older you get, the the less you seem, you feel like, you know, less, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So then it's, there's that part of it too. <laughs> yeah. Just like, all right, just give ourselves a break and stop taking ourselves so seriously. I yeah, don't, I don't think this needs so to be seriously. so seriously yeah. serious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's good. You know, and that, I mean, at 22 and you're 28. Just turned 29. Just yesterday. Turned, just turned hey, 20. happy birthday. Oh, yesterday? Yeah, thank you. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have sent you a text. You wouldn't respond responded anyway. Yes. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been a little... I, that was, I've, I've been trying to be better, but yeah. Well, actually, you guys are great in group chats. I know the best way to communicate with both of you is to have a group chat together. Like when it's me, Delaney, and Miles, yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or like More if, pressure. if it's like us and Deanna's in there, yeah. like on it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. at, uh, at 22 and 29, um, I mean, you guys mathematically almost pretty much a lock to make the Paris Olympics. Have you guys accepted that as a reality yet? Or are you, are you waiting until it's like locked in? I mean, nothing's locked in until it's locked in. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it was, it was hard for us to navigate it because obviously we've never been through this process. Right. And we hear people saying like, "Oh, you guys are like, like for sure." And uh, well, we don't, we haven't even played twelve tournaments yet, so right. we're actually not. <laughs> yeah, right. you know, anything could happen. Um, I think we're not. We're expecting to be there. I think we deserve to be there. Um, I think we're one of the top teams in the world. Um, but until that, you know, whatever mathematically gets clinched it's it's not real so yeah. um still got some more work to do but yeah it's cool for me to hear you acknowledge that you're one of the top teams in the world it's fun i think watching you guys is extra fun for me because like i came into the game later so i didn't know try when he was starting to play didn't know taylor right. and trevor when they were starting to play but i played against you when you were a kid and I yeah. watched you play like your first qualifier. Yeah. Yeah. I played against you with Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. And it is it's interesting. Like, yeah. And it's been fun for me to watch you guys go from that, where at one point I was like, I just want to keep pace with Andy and Logan Weber. I think that was my goal. And now you're one of the top teams in the world. It's, um, it's been fun to watch. And it's fun to watch you continue to get better. It's like you guys almost have like the reverse Dunning Kruger effect, where like if, like the Dunning Kruger effect is like if you know something two inches deep, you think you know it two miles deep. Yeah. But you guys know it ten miles deep, and you're like, we don't know anything. Like yeah. we still yeah. have so much more room to grow. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that's kind of I think our, um, for lack of a better term, we got a little static on especially the defensive system last year. I was like, oh shit, this works. Yeah. You know, and um, it it works sometimes <laughs> you know you gotta have you gotta there and even now like i think there's so much more we need to learn from other teams from just having different experiences mm -hmm. um playing like different you know different styles of players and then offensively too like figuring out the best way to go about that um but yeah i think when we're doing our best it feels like we don't know anything and yeah if we can stay in that zone just up until match time and then be like, nah, we know everything. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like still, still having that exploration. Um, even if we are doing well, having that exploration where it's like, okay, well, you know, at some point it's, 
we're going to have to have more solutions. So just keep getting the tool bag bigger to be able to go in. Um, and I think that's, that's why we shot up so quickly mm -hmm. is cause we went deeper than most teams, um, on very simple things. Um, and we try to fully understand it from, from the ground, um, up so that we have a good foundation yeah. to, to lean on. So makes sense. Yeah. Um, I know that you guys have, uh, practice relatively soon. I want to make sure we gave you time to, uh, shout out oh, your yeah. company on your sweatshirt and yeah, your hat yeah. miles, um, center point, who is center point? Like give us a little rundown of who they are and how they're helping you out. Uh, they're the active trading division of the parent, co their parent company is clear street. Um, it's a finance sort of fintech company. It's, um, growing very fast. Um, but Centerpoint has been around for a while. They're just a premium active trading firm. So if you're a day trader, um, they have some really like high level traders. Um, it's kind of like, a, it feels like more of a, a, a club a little bit, like it's a really like high end trading platform. It's not like Robin hood or mm -hmm. whatever. So, um, yeah, I can. And yeah, so. I, I saw, I, I got to talk to Scott. I tried to set up an uh, account of I wasn't willing to put the money minimum requirement. In yet, so. <laughs> yeah. so, but they, they, I, I looked around on it. It looked really cool. Um, and I know his brother works for them too. Marcus, yeah. um, and Scott, um, the, the head of center point, he, he has helped us so much. Um, not only like supporting us financially, but he's been in our corner for everything. Um, so we want to give a special shout out to yeah. him too. Um, yeah, it's a huge beach volleyball awesome. fan. Good, good player too. Um, and yeah. his, his daughter Sam is going to be going to USC. Yeah, mm -hmm. There we um, go. Oh, nice. Not <clears throat> this upcoming year, but the next year. I think she's a junior this year. Cool. Right so on. look out, look out for her. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, Instagrams like yeah, yeah Miles Partain and Andy Banish, and then maybe my website milespartain.com. I think it'll definitely be out by the time this is released. So. Sweet. Cool. I'm looking forward to the blogs, man. Yeah, me too. I'm I excited. like writing more than, uh, I think I like writing more than talking, but we'll see. <laughs> just, just as long. Uh, yeah. it, in Hamburg last year, I was, it was like 2 a.m. and you, I just hear the. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, all of my partners can relate. To yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so just, uh, yeah. Maybe maybe during the day this year. <laughs> Get that rubber. I, last year. <laughs> I know you're just writing to yourself. Dude, it's like, what are you writing? Maybe <laughs> yeah, like a silent keyboard or something. Well, vlog yeah. would be worse at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is my party. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. Andy, wake up here. Say hi to the vlog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andy's sleeping. No, I'm not. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah. There's two coffees in the morning instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right awesome, on. boys. Well, appreciate you guys coming on. Um, your first event will be Tepic. Your schedule is what? All the elites? All the elites, maybe Poland. Okay. Cool. Right on. Um, oh, and one more shout out. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a cool event coming up. Maybe oh, yeah. if this is released before 20, April. April 26th. Yeah, we'll be up before then. Okay. We got... Um, Norway and Italy coming down to wave volleyball. Hell yeah. So if you're, if you're around South oh, Bay, right. you want to drive down, um, if you're in San Diego, we're going to be, or fly in. I mean, Norway or fly is, in. Yeah. Yeah. this is about as close as Norway and Italy will get to yeah. most, like yeah. many Americans. So yeah, I think it, it's, it's going to be, come. it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Shoot. Maybe we'll pop down <laughs> while we'll be, we might be in China, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but that's awesome. Yeah, we're super excited. I think we might mix up the teams a little bit too. Oh, have yeah. some blockers versus defenders or something. That'd be fun. Oh so, yeah, a little yeah. exhibition in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Wave Volleyball Club at Wave Volleyball um, in Del Mar, and uh, we'll be doing some fundraising, some good stuff. Uh, yeah. we'll have food. Sweet. If it, um, if, yeah, if it goes how expected, I think it. Yeah, we got to figure out a way to like ration the tickets or something because. I think yeah, get on there should quick. be more interest in availability. A good so way to ration tickets out. is to up the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see what we do. Yeah. yeah. And and people can probably follow on your Instagrams, right? Yeah. Follow your Instagram if they want information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From yeah we'll Instagram, be... Wave should have stuff on their Instagram. Yeah, cool. we'll blast it out too, though. Sweet. 
Awesome, right boys. Right Thank on. you. Thanks we'll for having us on. We'll let you get to practice. All yeah. Right. Good luck this year. Looking forward to watching and uh, and commentating too. It's always fun to commentate with my buds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, boys. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Shoots. 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 <laughs> How?